Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll have a look at the split tone filter in On One Effects. This filter adds a two-toned look to your images, and uh, it's a nice accent for uh, travel photos or portrait photos, lifestyle photos. Those are the types of photos I like to use split tone on. So we'll run through all the sliders. I'll show you uh, fundamentally how the filter works, and then an example. Also, if you're thinking of adding on one products to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that can save you some money, gives me a little bit of support, and I can keep coming back and doing tutorial videos like this one. So let's have a look at the split tone. To get a handle on how split tone is changing the tones in your image, we'll use this uh, course approximation of the zone system to get us going here. But first, let's add the split tone filter and let me explain the controls. Like all filters, we have a masking area, overall opacity, a handful of styles. But the main sliders here, main controls, we have two different sets of controls. We have one for highlights and one for shadows. And then in the middle there, there's this balance thing. So in general, both of these uh, groups of sliders work the same way. You choose a tint or a tone to apply to your highlights you choose a different tint to apply to the shadows, you can adjust what color that tint is, how intense it is, and then the balance slider lets you shift how much or how little of the shadow tint or the highlight tint is applied. So for this example, we'll use, uh, let's just use a classic like, you know, blue yellow kind of tint because that'll show up very nicely in our zone system here. Now we don't expect anything to happen in pure black zone zero and pure white zone 10. But to show the uh, exaggerated example here, we're gonna crank the amount up on highlights. So I've chosen a hue, I'm setting the amount and we can see how the highlights are being tinted with yellow. Same thing in the shadows. There's a blue tint here. We crank up the amount and we can see that blue is being applied to the shadows. And pretty evenly, as we get into the middle around zone five, we see a mix of these colors. That's where balance comes in. We can shift things. So we say, you know what? I want more of the scene to be considered a shadow tone versus a highlight tone. And you can see how, as we say, balance, it's gonna be, think of the, the left side as pure black, the right side is pure white, aligning with your histogram, right? You push it all the way to the right, you're saying, I want more things to be tinted with my highlight color. Opposite side, I want less things to be tinted with my highlight color. And you can see the transition. Like this transition right now is like kind of zone six, zone seven, push it the other way, it's more like the zone four, zone three type of area, that mix between yellow and blue being purple. And then we zero it back out, we see it in the middle again. So this is how you can control what things get tinted and by how much. So once again, to recap that, you have a color, you can choose anything you want. You know, and I've got the developer, I'd say I've got color wheels, you know, whatever your operating system supports for choosing colors. Let's choose orange this time. And we do the same thing with shadows. Uh, how about we do something in the purplish magenta area? Okay. Set the amount, which is like the intensity of each one of these tints. You control highlights and shadows individually. And then finally, you can balance it out to say, do I want more of the shadow? tint or do I want more of the highlight tint? Uh, last button I didn't cover is this one here just swaps the colors, right? Back and forth. So that's how split tone operates. There's one more control at the very bottom that I haven't talked about. It says mode. This is controlling how does the split tone, how do these colors mix with your photo? And the best way to work with these is just to audition them. You can see in this case, if I do normal, I'm really almost doing a complete interaction and it includes white and it includes pure black. I don't tend to use normal very often. I almost always end up with color, but you do have these other blending modes. And depending on what you're looking for, uh, things like color, lighten, sometimes screen, they can be useful, but uh, most often I'm in mean, color or lighten. You can see that there's, a, there's quite a bit of difference here. A lot of it depends on the nature of your photo. Uh, the built-in styles most of the time are color. There's a couple that'll choose a, a different blending mode, but if uh, you need to get an adjustment where, oh, you know, these sliders aren't quite working for me, 
maybe I want to try and audition a few different blending modes. Uh, so that's all been fun and interesting and looking at a bunch of gray bars on the screen. How about we do this as an example on an actual photo. I've got a travel photo here that the split tone does, it does a nice treatment for. In this photo here, uh, the vibe, the mood that I have is a little somber. You know, it's a rainy day and you get the person shielding themselves from the weather. And uh, I want to add a, a bit of a, a different just tonality, a different mood to it. And a split tone is quite nice for that. Uh, in, in this scene, I'm thinking a little more of cooler colors and, and blending things in. So let me get this, uh, this split tone added. And we'll see that the, the photo already changed, just with the defaults, right, before and after. It's already kind of cooler. Uh, for this scene, I'll start with selecting my colors. So my normal workflow is choose my colors, dial in their intensities, and then finally get the balance slider set. So let's see. Highlights, um, I want something in the, in, in the purplish range. Um, and I'm kind of like half watching the, what do you call it, the uh, the, the, the color wheel, so I, I, I'm in the general area, but then once I've got there, I'm kind of just wiggling my finger around on the uh, trackpad there to dial in a tone, so it's uh, really watching the photo to get that adjustment. That feels kind of good, but uh, I might want to, um, to downplay that color a little bit, so I can take it all the way down and then start inching it back up until things feel let's just say nice. I mean, this is all uh, personal preference. This is all like the visual thing you're going for. Uh, let's see before that change and after. So a little, a little purple. Uh, for the shadows, um, I want to go classic teal. I just want to do a teal color. And in, um, I think it's in here, there's a, there's a teal setting. If I could spell teal, I'll move my fingers over one set. There we go. System teal color. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Oh, but I was on my highlights. Oh, no. Undo that. Click that shadow box. Now choose teal. Better. Okay. I've got my teal dialed in. And for the amount, this one might get heavier. You know, I, I want to give it a very, you know, cool feeling. And so you can see how different this is before. And really this, this cool part in the shadows it's counterplaying the overall like warm yellowish tones that are there. And oh, I might push this pretty darn hard. Okay, let's push it up to about there. Um, and that'd be a little bit strong. I'll back that off just some. Um, and then there's the balance, because now even though I have maybe a stronger tint in the shadow, I can pull it back a little bit, I can push it forward, depending on what makes sense for the photo. And I will just experiment. So this is saying push it toward that highlights tone, more purple, and I'm not as keen on that because it's bringing back in some of that gold and yellow uh, from the brick work. If I pull it all the way down, it's gonna get very blue. So something around Maybe maybe here. Once again, working visually, I'm not paying attention to the slider. The number doesn't matter. The look of the photo does. You've heard me say that so many times, I'm sure. Um, last things, just to, uh, to try out a couple of other things, to audition some other blending modes. We'll see how like normal or light and gets a very washed out feel because those pure blacks, those pure whites will get affected. I do like color mode here, so I'm going to stick with that. To you know, round things out, just so you get an appreciation of how can you work with these uh, different sliders. We do have our overall strength. So this is the entire strength of the split tone. So you do not have to keep it at 100%. We can, we can dial this up or down as needed. It's a personal preference. You could reduce amounts on the intensity of the colors, or you can dial things back here. It's ease of use. Whichever one makes sense, do that. Right? If you like the colors but you want to just back everything off a little bit, the main opacity slider makes sense. And a reminder, you always have your masking tools. right? So, uh, for example, if I did not want to affect, say, uh, the umbrella. Let's just say for the umbrella. I'm going to do a Command R, turn on my perfect brush, and let's just say I wanted to keep the umbrella its original kind of golden color. I won't painstakingly mask this right now, you get the idea. So I can keep a color in the scene 
it's somewhat of a form of selective coloration, but if uh, the split tone is a little bit too heavy on something, you can always back it off with the masks. So uh, that's an example of split tone in action. Uh, you saw how the basic sliders work. And it's really nice for color grading. It's a, it's a it's a classic technique. A warm cool is is uh, always a classic. But you don't have to limit yourself to opposing colors on the color wheel. I'll use split tones where the highlights and the shadows are getting similar tones, and it can produce some very nice and very unique looks for your images. Hope you found the video useful. Any other questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.